Hi, this is Tim from Garden Hands. Today we're going to install a drip irrigation system for Jody's hay baskets. So first we had, we had a half inch line that we laid out along the perimeter so then we wanted to convert it to this quarter inch small tubing to go into each basket. Then we needed a tool, this tool, that blue tool is a um, punch so we can put these flag drippers in. They'll be inserted into the half inch line and then the small quarter inch line will push on to the end of these and that'll regulate the amount of water. That'll be one of the regulators of the amount of water that goes in. And here's a picture of these flag drippers. Next we have a timer. These are not necessarily in the order that we're going to use them, but this is a timer we got at Menards, I believe. That wasn't too expensive. I think it was $30 or something like that. Then we've got a bag of zip ties that will tie all this to the fence as we go, and you'll see that. Then we have a filter. Um, for our water system, we have got steel pipe in our line yet, so we needed a filter just to make sure we didn't get anything plugged up in any of these little fittings. Then we have a hose to drip tube adapter. This threads onto your garden hose fitting and then the other end is where you push your uh, drip tube into. And then we have a pressure regulator that looks similar to that piece. They look about the same, only a pressure regulator has got a hose fitting on each end. And then we picked up a couple extra couplers just in case we cut the tube and then decided to splice onto it and some T's in case we wanted to go to a, a different direction. So next we're gonna take the fittings that we need that hook onto our hydrant go down to, to where the hydrant is and get those hooked up. Um, we're not sure what, we didn't look at the directions, I guess. I guess I'm famous for that on which way these should be installed as to first, second, third, fourth, and so on. But this is a way we put them on. Um, they seem to be working in another location where we've done it this way. So first we put on our hose adapter so that we can still screw a hose on to the hydrant and let the timer hang there. I think this is a good thing to do on another application that we have. We don't have this and every time I want to use the garden hose I have to unscrew the fitting. And all of these are plastic and they're not going to last forever. So once you cross thread them, you're kind of out of luck. Then we put the filter on thinking that let's get our water filtered before we send it through anything else, any other pieces of this so it doesn't get any particles in it or anything like that. I think that filter was an 80 micron filter, I believe. And we'll check that once every couple weeks at, at, at the beginning to see if there's anything that accumulates in it. And after that, if it isn't, we'll be fine. Next, we put the pressure regulator on and then the timer. After the timer, we put on our adapter that adapts from a garden hose fitting to the drip tube, to the half inch drip tube. Um, after we had this all up and running, we or I decided that probably what we'll do is we'll make a bracket on the wall of that little building that's behind us. It's a block building um, and mount all of these pieces on there and run from the hydrant over to this with just a short piece of garden hose. It just it's quite a long piece on the end of the hydrant and I didn't want something to bump that or break it or have it fall off and then your hydrants wide open and it, if you're not there for six hours or a day or something like that you're not water running all over. So after we had our fittings and our timer put on then we had to get the hose over to the location where we needed it. Um, right here is some decorative it's trap rock and so we decided to bury it in that. So we dug a small trench around the, there's a pool pump there, or a pump for the swimming pool. We dug around that and then we laid our tube into that. And then Lindsay suggested that maybe we should put some sort of a protection around this because this tube is kind of flimsy. It isn't as tough as a garden hose and that trap rock is very sharp. So we had some pipe insulation in the garage that we had gotten it. Menards or Home Depot, something like that. Um, and it's a foam, it's like these noodles that kids swim with, only it's got a slit in it. It's made for insulating pipes, and I had some for 
half inch or three quarter inch tubing and it took three pieces of it and it's very inexpensive. So we slid that around the, the um, irrigation line after we put it in the first time, we dug it back out. And then we used some landscape staples over it to hold that down in the ground. Um, they weren't really landscape staples, they were a piece of high tensile wire that we used for fencing that we cut to the right length and then bent them because we had them. So here you can see what we did. We, here's the insulation. We slid that over the tubing and then we put the staples, we put three staples on each one or three hold downs on each one and put those in the ground pretty good and then buried it. And that seemed to work good. By the way, all of this is a voiceover. You obviously can see that because it's right next to the highway and with as many semis and motorcycles and cars and, and it was a Friday afternoon so everybody was going to the lake. It's impossible to film next to the road there. So sometimes this maybe isn't quite in sync and it looks like I'm, my lips are moving and I'm not saying anything, which is normal. So we did, we did bury it with that and that worked out really good. That's a good way to do it. Otherwise, we could have laid some cardboard under it or over it and helped it, uh, protected it that way too. So once we got out of the trap rock and over into the grass, we just, we dug a small trench and kind of saved the sod and then watered that back again when we got done or after we got done. Um, made a small trench to get it across. It's a gate right here. After we go through the gate or across the gate area, we're going to put in an elbow. We didn't have one on hand, but Lindsay had some. So we'll put an elbow into this irrigation line. And before we put it all together, we'll put a PVC, like an inch and a half or one inch PVC over that, that will run alongside of our gate post up six or eight inches. That way it protects it from a lawnmower or from a string trimmer. Because I think this line would be pretty easy to cut with a string trimmer after a couple of times around it. And then likewise, up on top, we'll have an elbow to make it squared off to run a, along that top of the fence real nice. So for now, we zip tied it on there and got it up to the top of the fence. And once we got it up there, it was very easy to come along and zip tie every about every foot and a half, two feet. I think I counted five up and down pieces and then I'd put a zip tie on and then once in a while an extra one where the hay basket was just to hold it. After that, we decided how long a piece we needed of the quarter inch line or how far out into the basket we needed to go with the water. And what Lindsay kind of thought was we wanted to have a drip in the middle of the hay basket but not any beyond the middle, not any further out because the water will move out from there. So we wanted to stay a little bit uphill, so a little bit closer to the back or the side that I'm on. So we made, um, we decided on four of those for each basket because there is five plants in each basket. So on the first one, we put each piece together and then zip tied it on and decided after that that let's put our pieces together, zip tie the irrigation line to the fence and have all our pieces together and punch the holes when it's fastened to the fence and then put the pieces in after that. And that worked out really good. That went pretty fast. I think after we got it figured out, got all our little tubes cut, it probably took half an hour to finish the rest of it. We had a tubing cutter that we used to cut it, um, which is a little bit handier than if you had just a knife because you can make a square cut with it, and I think that's a little bit handier. So the other thing we did prior to all of this was Jody laid out this tube once we got it from Amazon or Home Depot, wherever she got it from. It was all curl coiled up in a neat package. We uncoiled it and laid it out, and I think that's a good thing to do. And it's been so hot, it was easy anyway, but it. It got it so it all laid nice and straight, so we didn't have to kind of wrestle with it to get it uncurled and put on the fence. 
if you're laying it in the ground in a trench, it'd be a little bit different. You could lay it down and kind of bury it as you go, but it worked really good to have it already laid out and relatively straight. So then we, we did a total of six hay baskets and we got up to the end and that was as much hose as we had. We had a hundred foot roll of half inch tubing and that was as far as we got. We're going to, um, Lindsay has some more tubes, so we'll end up finishing it and Jody has a pergola at the end, just a small one, that we'll drop down again underground and go alongside of a flower bed and then we'll use a small line to go up in. There's a basket up in that per hang from the pergola. And then she has four, three, four, five pots that are on the patio there. So we'll use small line and go to each of those. And I think that'll work pretty good there. The flag drippers that we got were rated at one gallon an hour and you can get half a gallon an hour. You're up to two gallons an hour. I can't remember what the rest of them were. We figured this would work about right for us. So when we got all done with this, we turned on our, we turned the timer to manual and we kind of timed it with a stopwatch or your phone to see when this basket would be wet enough. And we came up with about five minutes. And then we also had to remember that we're doing this and if we add some more to the end of it, that's gonna probably take away from a little bit of the capacity so it'll slow it down a little bit. Five minutes is plenty, but we're gonna do that twice a day, at least for now, with it being about 90 degrees every day for the last week. And then it'll have to be adjusted once in a while. And once in a while when it rains, you just have to, the timer is pretty handy. You can turn it to off if there's a day of rain or two, three days you don't need it. Or you can turn it to manual and you can water manually if you need to, if it got too hot or if something got turned off, if somebody turned the hydrant off and you didn't realize it. Um, another good thing about this timer being on a hydrant, if somebody turns a hydrant off, all that happens is a timer will turn on, but there's no moving parts that'll get dry or run out of water. It just turns it on and there's no water there. It doesn't hurt anything. So. I think this system is going to work pretty, it, it will work good. It's this, these hay baskets need water just about every day when it's this hot out and this takes that away from it and where she can just check them every day and then once in a while she can put some fertilizer in if she does want to fertilize a little bit once they get to blossoming heavy. In the winter time or in the, probably in the fall, <clears throat> as soon as we get done with these blossoming and she's done with watering them, We'll take a small air compressor and we'll obviously we'll take the timer off and the filter, that whole assembly at the hydrant end of it, we'll take that off and put that inside in the shop or in the house and then we'll use a small air compressor and blow the line out from whichever end it works the best to blow out. That way uh, we shouldn't have any damage from it and this hose is so flexible. I almost think if it did freeze it wouldn't hurt it much, but if we blow all the water out, then we'll be good and safe and it won't take 10 minutes to do that with a small portable compressor. Otherwise, this went super easy. This was worth the time that it took to do it now, more than save the time it's gonna take, or the time it saves watering. So that about should just about do this project. We'll probably have her take some video of it when the flowers get a little bit bigger. When it's running, you can see how it drips. Um, if you have any questions or comments, or if you've done this and you can see something that we could do that would improve ours, uh, leave a comment. Comments are always welcome. Again, thank you. Please subscribe and have a good day.